Hi, welcome to the Christmas box uh, unboxing that uh, I said I would do. It's been a couple weeks and so um, I sent over uh, Carson's Christmas box, he has it. Um, I received the box that Carson sent me um, and we're gonna be opening up uh, gifts um, for 12 days until Christmas. So uh, I have his box right here. It's full of nice things and a little note. So I'm gonna start with uh, <laughs> the note. Um, Says, says, Dear Debbie, with each 12 days of gifts, I've included 12 of my favorite poems. I hope that you enjoy these 12 days of Christmas as much as I have enjoyed compiling them for you. With affection, Carson. Oh, that's so nice. And it has little dogs on the back. Um, this first thing that was just kind of tucked into the box is a whole bunch of stickers, Harry Potter stickers. Um, that's super cute. All right, I'll have to use these when I send cards and mail. But today is day one of Christmas box unboxing. So let me just show you kind of, oh, these are all the poems and he has put them inside an envelope and put them together. So that's really nice. And then in the box, let me just show you, are all the wrapped goodies with different numbers in them. Uh, on them so that I can figure out which one is which. That's 11. No, that's six. Let's see. Number one, where are you? Here's number one. Okay, so let me open up the poem, the stack of poems. Uh, here's day number one. This is such a good idea. I didn't even think to do that. Oh man. This box is gonna outshine my box I sent him. All right, poem number one. Ah, Afternoon on a Hill by Edna St. Vincent Millay. There we go, that's really nice. I will be the gladdest thing under the sun. I will touch a hundred flowers and not pick one. I will look at cliffs and clouds with quiet eyes, watch the wind bow down the grass and the grass rise. And when the lights begin, and when lights begin to show up from the town, I will mark which must be mine and then start down. It says, ah, the perfect day, the joy and simplicity of being alive. Love Carson and Alex. That's so nice. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep these somewhere safe. Maybe I'll compile like a little scrapbook of all of these poems, that's really nice. All right, here's gift number one. Little snowmen. And it is, oh! Ah, indicative of the times. <laughs> they're COVID masks, but they're they're super sweet. So they're, um, oh, they're from Old Navy and they're fabric, which is really nice. And I, I don't have this style where it's like an accordion version um, and the ear area, I guess this is more adjustable so you can move it around to fit the back of your ears, which is really nice. I think with glasses, sometimes it makes it really difficult to um, get a good fit. So I can really customize it. Mmm. Oh, these are quite comfortable too. That's nice. It's a little more structured and sturdy so you can kind of breathe through them a little bit better. Sometimes with my nose shape and just the way my face is, like when I breathe in the fabric, it like sucked into my face and it's like, it, it like suffocates me, but this one keeps its shape so I can breathe pretty comfortably with it. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. I will have to give these a good wash and put them into my rotation. One is candy canes, um, and the other one, they look like uh, polar bears on a sled. That's really cute. Thank you. Um, hopefully, throughout the year, um, when 2021 appears, um, more of the vaccine will be around and people will have a better chance to, to get them. And then eventually, you know, we will all be vaccinated, let's hope. And then we won't necessarily need these anymore unless 
Uh, well, in Asia, a lot of people still wear masks. Um, it's pretty accepted there. Like if you're sick, you don't want to get other people sick. So you will wear a mask um, just to be considerate of other people. And so oftentimes in Asia, you will see people wearing masks. So uh, I don't know. I feel like masks are kind of here to stay. Um, I'll, I'll still keep them around just in case. Um, and yeah, these are really sweet. Thanks, Carson. This is day one. Hi again, day two um, of Carson's Christmas box. It is getting colder here in California and I know um, I'm in Southern California, so I'm, I've, I've adjusted to much warmer weather. So I know I will sound really silly when I say that 60 is cold. <laughs> It's cold. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want to put the heat too up because the air is really dry. The winds are going, so everything is really, really dry. The desert winds are coming in. So uh, too much air, too much heater makes the place even drier. So I did order a humidifier. So hopefully that will help. But let's get to day two. And Carson is up in Northern California. So the next one is Fog. Oh, Carl the Fog. Fog by Carl Sandburg. The fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. Oh, it says Debbie and Alan, San Francisco misses you. Love Carson and Alex. Oh, that's so sweet. Carl the Fog, yes. Sometimes, some days I really do miss Carl the Fog because Carl the Fog was very good for my skin. <laughs> but I don't miss the feeling of being damp all the time and cold. All right, let's find number two in the box. Number two, no, that's number three. It's kind of fun hunting around the box to find the numbers. Ah, number two, here is number two. Oh, this is more of the little um, dachshund wrapping paper and his little, his little sweater and his little hot dog. This is much well, much more well taped than the other one. Oh my goodness. Ooh, they are edible feasties. Okay, it is the Reese's Peanut Butter Trees. Um, two trees. I didn't know they made them in tree size, but apparently they do. Um, these look good and there's two packs. So extra, although I suppose I should share, but I don't have to, right? <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know when it comes to kind of holiday candy, I do think of Reese's peanut butter just because I love peanut butter and chocolate is such a good combination. So I will be having this as a snack later in the afternoon. So thank you, that's day number two. Here is day three. Let's see what poem day three brings. The poem for day three is Jabberwocky. <laughs> um, if you haven't read this poem, it's, it's uh, full of kind of made up words and made up kind of <laughs> Uh, rhymes by Lewis Carroll. It's meant to be kind of nonsensy, but um, it's turned into its own world. Um, if you have seen any of the Alice in Wonderland kind of movies and and the lore around Alice in Wonderland, you know that the Jabberwocky is, they've created it um, to be something. And of course, there's the Bandersnatch as well. So <laughs> that is this one. It is, it is very much... I don't know, you kind of feel like the world is so upside down right now that making up your own words in your own world seems like quite a normal thing to do because we live in such weird times. Very fitting. And I love, <laughs> I love Alice in Wonderland too. And so um, Carson knows that. So hence the Jabberwocky poem. Okay, day number three. Here is number three. Hmm. It's a little bit lumpier. I wonder what this one is. It's always interesting when it's clearly it's been wrapped in a way because it's not a traditional shape. So 
So how do you wrap something that's all kind of different shapes? <gasps> okay, I, it's a bag of some sort. It's a bag of, ah! <laughs> lots of candies. <gasps> Ooh, but there's something in here that intrigues me. Not only are there, you know, the Reese's pieces or the Reese's peanut butter cups and Kit Kats, but Ooh, I am looking at these. This looks good. It's an unreal dark chocolate and coconut bar. Hmm. Both Carson and I love kind of like uh, mounds or almond joy or like coconut covered chocolate. I don't like coconut flakes on their own, but I like them in this candy form. Um, and so I am really excited to eat these along with these also festive looking, these holiday Kit Kats, that looks good. Um, I'm assuming these are just normal candies. They've just been put into uh, holiday, holiday clothing. So that is very exciting. Um, yeah, so more candy, yum. I do not mind that. Um, and that's day three, more sweet things. Thanks, I wonder what I'll get tomorrow. Advent calendar, day four. Hmm. Cottontail by George Bogan. Poor cottontails, poor boys, oh no. I have a feeling this might be uh, a sad one. It says, <laughs> A couple of kids we went hunting for woodchucks 50 years ago in a farmer's field. No woodchucks, but we cornered a terrified rabbit in the angle of two stone fences. He was sitting up, front paws together, supplicating, trembling, while we were deciding where to, whether to shoot him or spare him. I shot first but missed, thank God, and then my friend fired and killed him and burst into tears. I did too, a little cottontail, a haunter. Oh my God, this is traumatic. Wait, I don't understand what this has to do. I mean, maybe it has to do with um, the gift today, but that was so sad. I don't understand what's going on. All right, let's look for gift number for day four. Day four, no, that's 11. Oh, here, day four is down here. God, I don't hope I don't get a dead um, rabbit. That would be horrible. What? It, it, uh, Carson, what's going on with that poem? You're gonna have to explain why that's one of your favorites. It's so sad. What a horrible friend. And it's Andy's Candies. What does it have to do with cottontails? Oh my goodness. I mean, I love Andy's Candies, but that poem, geez. What a way to start day four. <laughs> All right, we are on Advent day number five. Let's, uh, let's see what this day holds for us. Is the Tiger by William Blake. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely have read this poem before. If you have not, check out other William Blake poetry. All right, let's see what day number five the gift looks like. Here's number five. Hmm, it feels like well, I won't say what it feels like. I think I know what this is. <laughs> Something chocolatey. Yes, it's the familiar shape of Linzer truffles. These are milk chocolate assorted truffles. Ooh, lots of different flavors. It looks like there's milk chocolate, sea salt milk chocolate, and fudge swirl milk chocolate. Mmm, yum. Day number six. This be the verse. Huh, I have never 
seen or read this poem before. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I agree. There's definitely something to the sentiment expressed in this poem. <sighs> yep. Relationships are hard. <laughs> All right, let's find number six. Yes, I think this one's number six. <laughs> this is squishier than the others. Oh, are these... I dare say these might be... Ooh. Socks. Ooh. I guess they're, they're Christmas lights? But they're very squishy and very soft. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, I think I'll put these on now because even though it's supposed to be high of 81, it's cold inside the house. So these will be very welcome on my feet. Thank you. Day number seven. Ooh, day number seven. Okay. Uh, Walt Whitman, one of my favorites. Um, yes, I definitely love reading some Walt Whitman. When I heard the learned astronomer by Walt Whitman. Hmm. So Carson says, at one point in my life, I had this poem completely memorized. This is my favorite poem by Uncle Walt. Oh. Yeah, if you haven't had a chance to read some Walt Whitman, I highly recommend it. It's, it always is a, a very refreshing experience, I will say. Okay, number seven, here we go. This is number seven. Hmm, this is also a bit squishier. Let's see. We already had a pair of socks, so maybe this is another. <laughs> Uh, I think so. We had uh, Christmas lights previously. In our socks with trees. So I guess if you wear them and put them together, they make a Christmas tree. <laughs> Again, very soft and squishy. I mean, socks are pretty much a classic Christmas gift, right? I mean, everybody gets pairs of socks for Christmas. You know, I have to decide which one to wear first. <laughs> Day eight. I can't believe the days are going by so quickly. I feel like it was just, it was just November the last time I looked and it's already the end of December. Oh my goodness. Oh, a classic. Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. I mean, if you haven't read this or heard it somewhere, where have you been? <laughs> I love this one too. This is a great, great poem. <sighs> Gives us a little bit of hope or strength for the next year ahead. Definitely. Okay, let's see. Number eight looks like it's here. Let's see. This is not as squishy, so probably not another pair of socks. No, I was wrong. <laughs> Different kind of socks. <laughs> These are socks of Baby Yoda, <laughs> or should I say Grogu, um, now. And if you haven't been watching the second season season of The Mandalorian, um, where have you been? Uh, they just finished it, so I'm not going to give any spoilers, but definitely please go watch the second season of The Mandalorian. It's really, really good. These are cute. Okay. I don't know. Is it too cute to wear? Should I just hang these up somewhere? <laughs> All right, day number nine. Day number nine's poem is The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Oh, I think I've read this before, but very long time ago. It says, Dear Debbie and Alan, although the title of Mary Oliver's poem is The Summer Day, the meaning of this poem is, pr is timeless. 
May you always have the wonder of life and appreciate the power of each moment. Aw, that's nice. It's very hard to do this year, but gotta keep trying. Okay, let's look for number nine. Looks like it's this big one. Let's see what this is. Ooh, very good job of taping, Carson. This one's <laughs> tapes very tightly. Oh, what's this? Looks like it has buttons or Oh, okay. Let's see, this looks like it's been handmade. It looks like a pouch with, I don't know what this is made out of, but it's definitely hand created and sewn on. It is a small little pouch. It's very de dense with all the beading. That's cute. Okay, nice. I wonder where he got this from. He will have to let me know. Cute. Day 10. Ah, day 10 is Hope is a Thing with Feathers, Emily Dickinson. Very famous poem. I have read this a lot. <laughs> it says, Hope, how sweet, natural, and good it is. Let's hope the best is yet to come. New Year. I agree. I agree. Without hope, what's the point? But it is very quiet and very delicate. So we'll see if it, we'll see how much of it we get this year. Number 10, <clears throat> day 10, looks about the size of a button or pin. <laughs> it is, I guess this is our hope, open. Oh, there's a note that goes with this one. Four years of hope, <laughs> seriously. Well, I don't know how many feathers he's got lying around, but Let's hope. <laughs> nice. Day 11. The Peace of Wild Things. Wendell Berry. Yep, he is. One of Carson's favorite poems, this is, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yes, we definitely do need to take a moment. So many poets go with nature and use nature as a way to find connection. Oh, okay. So this is the last thing. This is number 11. There's no 12 in the box. So let's see. A bit like a scavenger hunt. Let's see what happens. Number 11 is, it is a tiny felted penguin ornament. <laughs> we'll have to put him up on the tree. That's super cute. His body's very, very round and Squishy. All right, we'll see how it goes. Thank you, tuxedo penguin. <laughs> All right, and now day number 12. Day number 12, part two. Ah, uh, Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Yes, I have also read this many, many times. <sighs> makes me miss New England. <laughs> Not the snow necessarily, but it makes me miss 
New England. All right, this is part part two, day 12. Aww. <laughs> Carson and Alex, um, they, Alex loves to bake things from America's Test Kitchen, so I'm assuming this is part and parcel of the yummy things that he has made and decorations. He, Carson loves, um, loves decorations that are like classic and um, made out of wood that are just very like traditional ones. Nice. And it looks like there is a gift certificate to Food 52. I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with it. So that's fun. Um, if you have any recommendations of what I should get using this, please let me know. That would be super helpful. And uh, Thanks yeah. for joining me um, on this kind of 12 days of Christmas box on like adventure for the past 12 days. Um, I hope Carson is having as much fun with his box as I did mine. So thanks for joining. I hope everyone had a really good holidays, keeping their spirits up, being as safe as possible, even though this is a really difficult year, I know. And especially, you know, being far away from loved ones and not being able to see as many people in person. Um, hopefully this will be the, the last year for that. But knowing we're doing it for the good of other people and, and for ourselves as well. And um, <laughs> we're, we're definitely become professional uh, video conferencing people, so yeah, I mean, at least we learned a new skill this year, right? Um, but yeah, hope everyone had a really great holidays. Um, glad to see that people are doing well and doing what they need to do, but I will see you in the new year. Merry Christmas, bye.